Greg Abbott versus Dade Phelan. It's January 3rd, 2024, and these are your headlines. So we're just a few days into the new year, and Governor Greg Abbott is already expanding his criticism of incumbent members of the Texas House, blasting one lawmaker for helping place Democrats in leadership positions. So as we've talked about before, school choice, that's been the top priority for Abbott. He's begun endorsing challengers against Republicans who opposed a plan to create education savings accounts a couple months ago. First elected to the Texas House in 2016, State Representative Justin Holland has drawn the ire of conservatives with a series of high-profile votes in contradiction to the party's priorities. Holland was one of 21 Republicans to vote with Democrats to strip a school choice proposal out of school spending legislation. However, that's not the only time that Justin Holland has bucked the party. He was one of just two Republicans on the House Committee on Homeland Security and Public Safety to join Democrats in voting to raise the age for semi-automatic rifle purchases larger than a 22 caliber from 18 to 21. He was also among the 60 Republican members who voted to impeach Attorney General Ken Paxton. Additionally, and this is important, he voted against a proposal back in 2021 to prohibit Democrats from serving as committee chairs. Now, all of this in totality led the Rockwall County Republican Party to issue a notice to voters in the district informing them of Holland's voting record. They said, we respect Representative Holland for the good votes he's made on our behalf over the years. However, he's grown increasingly unresponsive to voters in the Republican Party, especially over the last two legislative sessions. He's insulted and belittled local Republican voters and your Rockwall County Republican Party. That letter was signed by the county party's executive committee. Now, how does Abbott factor into this? Well, the notice was shared on social media on X by Governor Abbott, who noted that Holland voted against gun rights and school choice, but voted to put Democrats in leadership positions. Now, this is important. This is the first time that Abbott has criticized Democrats being placed in leadership positions. Speaker Dade Phelan, meanwhile, has embraced placing Democrats in leadership positions. He appointed eight, eight Democrats as chairs of uh, the chamber's 34 standing committees during this most recent session. Before he became speaker, he praised the bipartisan nature of politics inside the Texas Capitol, saying that it's a model that works well and it's not always about Republican versus Democrat or left versus right. Matt Rinaldi, the chairman of the Republican Party of Texas, said he was thankful for the governor's leadership, noting that sometimes it's necessary to state the obvious. School choice is good. Democrats in leadership positions are bad. And ending Democrat chairs, remember, is a priority of the Republican Party of Texas. Now, Justin Holland has two opponents in the upcoming primary election, former Trump spokesperson Katrina Pearson, as well as businessman Dennis London. And the governor is not yet endorsed in the race, nor has he endorsed Dade Phelan for re-election. We'll see what happens in the weeks ahead. The primary is March 5th. A North Texas school district has been caught hiding vital information from parents regarding the mental health issues of students who believe they are transgender. And the government watchdog group Citizens Defending Freedom said that they began investigating Anna Independent School District after a local mother alleged a violation of her parental rights. The investigation exposed a significant period during which her child identified and dressed as the opposite biological sex without parental knowledge. This was apparently part of the district's policies, and Anna ISD officials failed to communicate those changes to parents and neglected to inform them about the school's use of opposite sex pronouns and gender identity naming conventions. Using public information requests, CDF volunteers found that Anna ISD had adopted the practice of maintaining both a permanent record that includes the student's birth name and assigned sex, as well as a non-permanent record that reflects a name change typically associated with a gender identity transition. CDF's investigation revealed that Anna ISD implemented the non-permanent record practice for pronouns and names without parental notice or consent back in August of 2022. CDF is urging all Texas parents to seek clarity on their local school district policies regarding permanent and non-permanent records. They say especially those related to the concealment of gender identity and other mental health issues that may go undisclosed. 
If you're not watching the Luke Messias show, then you are not as engaged as everybody else is in Texas who's trying to make a difference, knowing exactly what's going on so that they can take action on the things that really matter. Guys, watch us on the Roku app for Texas Scorecard. Watch us on YouTube. Listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Get engaged, get more informed so together we can actually make a bigger difference on things that matter for the future of Texas. God bless you. Lastly, a pro-life group has issued a subpoena to three Texas abortion funds that are attempting to use taxpayer money from the city of San Antonio's Reproductive Justice Fund. And the group is the San Antonio Family Association. They're demanding the abortion funds turn over all the documents and evidence relating to the group's abortion trafficking and abortion procurement activities. The subpoenas will force the leaders of multiple Texas abortion funds to face questioning under oath about any criminal activities their organizations may be partaking in. The three organizations in question are Jane's Due Process, the Buckle Bunnies Fund, and the, uh, the Lilith Fund for Reproductive Equity, all of which lobbied for the creation of San Antonio's taxpayer-funded Reproductive Justice Fund. All of the organizations are believed to be involved in criminal abortion trafficking and abortion procurement activities. Back in September, we reported at Texas Scorecard on the San Antonio City Council voting in favor of the creation of this fund. The fund distributes money to various nonprofits providing, quote, reproductive health care, which, of course, in this context by the left, always means uh, abortion. In the state of Texas, abortion is prohibited unless the mother's life is directly at risk from the pregnancy. Furthermore, multiple Texas counties have adopted ordinances outlawing abortion and abortion trafficking within the county's unincorporated area. For more of today's stories, head to texasscorecard.com.